The SBIR program is over 20 years old now. It was originally, one of the original reasons it was developed was to help small businesses be more competitive with the mission agencies. This would be uh, the Department of Defense and NASA, where it was very difficult for, for small businesses to uh, market competitively against the large aerospace companies and to buy into programs wherever they did. Now, it's expanded since that time, and there's an additional emphasis now on commercialization, helping small businesses commercialize their technology. And also, and now this is the SDTR, which is part of the larger SBIR program, to help small businesses access technologies from universities uh, as part of this commercialization activity. Now, the uh, program is, is pretty significant. There's some 11 agencies which have R&D budgets large enough to have to issue competitive procurements to small businesses under the SBIR program. The total federal dollars is probably two and a half million dollars a year goes into this program. Essentially, two and a half percent of the extramural R&D funding of these agencies uh, goes into the pocket, uh, goes into the, uh, the pool, excuse me, of this thing. Now, there's 11 federal agencies that qualify that. Here's the big five. The Department of Defense has 55 percent of that funding. So it's a very major agency to pursue. But you have to understand that that's a mission agency. And they're interested in technologies which further uh, the specific missions that they think are most important at the time of the solicitation, and also some of the planning as well. Many of those technologies that they're interested in are not candidates for venture capital. The market is too small. We've had uh, numerous technologies which had which we've developed for the Department of Defense, which uh, had market variation of both. One million to thirty million dollars, and that's well below the level that DC people, that I'm sure you'll hear this from Jeff and others, uh, are willing to be interested in. Back in this king for those folks, as you might expect. Uh, on the other hand, a small R&D company is very interested in markets of that size because they can perhaps uh, do the production their own, their own if it's a high value thing, or uh, uh, not do a spin out but work with uh, commercial partners who are willing to take over the technology at a certain point and pay royalties. And the next largest agency is the NIH. Uh, actually, I left my glasses back there. It's, it's, it's also the FDA and the other components of the Department of Health. But uh, that is 28% of that $2.5 billion that I was telling you about. And they don't have this parochial interest. Uh, you have to have very good technologies. As a small business, you want to tie in with clinicians and researchers in the area to write strong proposals to them. And I'm going to come back to uh, the, the, the level of funding that these proposals just have. But the NIH is very aggressive. If you've got a good story, they're willing to put a lot of money into the phase one and phase two components of the SBIR, much larger than the other agencies uh, will do. After that, you get down to smaller percentages. National Science Foundation, National Science Foundation sits at 4%. It's not that big a target as the others. And then the other six agencies, Department of Homeland Security, Environmental Protection Agency, Department of Commerce, Department of Education, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that they make up only 3 or 4% of that total funding. So we at Physical Sciences End intend to target the bigger players, and that's particularly the DOD. And so the majority of our commercialization activities tend to drive towards small lot high value production. And uh, we've done four spin ups I guess, in the last 15 years. And we often license our technologies to partners, and we find that we can convince commercial partners after the end of the phase one and phase two programs to invest their own funds to get the uh, technology to the product stage. Because quite frankly, you can't do that with a phase one phase two. And I'll come back to that as well. Now, the, the STTR program requires these agencies to put 0.3% of their extra R&D funding into uh, a 
separate solicitation specific for joint industry university proposals. And only the, the top five agencies have SDTR programs, but as I told you, that's 95% of the total funding available. And again, um, the DOD is a big player, and they do their procurements through the basic research organizations of the services, uh, Air Force Office of Scientific Research, Army Research Lab, Navy Research Lab. So, uh, the other agencies have uh, just wide solicitations. They can come out at the same time as the SBIR. Now, it's a little different with the SDTR because a minimum of 30% of the funding has to go to the academic institution. And the goal is to transition the technology from the academic institution to, to the small business company. Um, on the other hand, the other limit is the small business has to have at least 40% of that funding. Uh, so when we write STTR proposals, we find that middle ground between the university and the small business, which makes sense always with the understanding that the small business wants to uh, be able to license any technology that's developed in the program. Uh, now, if that happens to go to a spin-out, that would be an ownership issue. But, but uh, for most cases, uh, it, it again turns out to be commercialization of us. So the SBIRs work this way. You get a, a phase one proposal. Uh, that comes uh, in response to a solicitation the value of that proposal might be seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars. And its purpose is to develop to demonstrate the feasibility of the technology. Not to build something yet, but to show that you can build something, basically. Or that you can make a measurement that can turn to a product. Now, you have six months to do that in. And if you're successful, then you write another proposal for phase two. Phase two is essentially to build a prototype. Right. It's a two-year program, and depending upon the agency, uh, the value of that program can vary from $600,000 to a million dollars. The exception of NIH, and I'll come back to that uh, later on. Uh, it takes another three months for that to be decided, whether you've won that proposal or not. So you're looking at a three-year cycle here. That's why I say if, you, if you've got a technology ready to go, the venture can get it's going to market large enough. <laughs> what the DOD is trying to do now, remember they want to get these technologies into their systems. They're developing programs for phase threes, where if it meets certain requirements, they will provide additional funding, sole source to the small business for phase three, and that can be a million to a million dollars. And the reason for that is uh, that it takes that long to turn a prototype into a product, particularly for the DOD, we have all these issues with shock hardening and things like that and technologies. I'll give you one example. We developed a technology. Five minutes. Okay, then I won't give that example. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me just talk in, in, in generics then. We have a number of technologies which we're able to push through phase three, as well as others that we've licensed. And what we tend to find is there's something that is colloquially called value of death. And that is between the end of the phase two and when you can get the technology to the marketplace. And it takes one to two million dollars generally for technology to get there. We have a number of such examples. It's just a lot of things that have to be done. You have to uh, design for safety issues. You've got to get under, under UL approval, CEU approval, it's going overseas. You've got to do all kinds of product trials. It's very time-consuming. Uh, in a few instances, we have got our commercial partners to provide that funding. In others, we have got the government agency to provide that funding, and that's particularly DOD. Okay. Now let me go back to NIH. As I told you, NIH is more aggressive. Uh, they have super SBIRs. They are willing to fund phase twos of multiple millions of dollars if you've got a technology that really makes sense for our country. Uh, and in fact, they are willing to fund multiple phase two. There are some issues with clinical trials uh, and what they're willing to fund or not. But it's a, a super agency to, to work with. And their goal is to make this country, in the medical sense, a better place to be. Uh, 